with its well-preserved colonial buildings and its colourful streets, is it any wonder that Santo Domingo and Dominican Republic is a World Heritage Protected City? It's one of these ones that has actually surprised me on the good side. Santo Domingo is the capital of Dominican Republic, which is on the island of Hispanola. And Dominican Republic shares Hispanola with Haiti. I've just been to Haiti. Welcome to Cape Haitian in Haiti. And you couldn't find two countries that share an island, largely share a colonial history and ethnic heritage, more different than these two. You know, every city in the world has a street you say you wouldn't walk down at night time. In Haiti, there wasn't a street that I would walk down in daytime. But in Dominican Republic, Nema problem. There's very few photos and videos that I can show you from Haiti because it was just too damn dangerous. But Dominican Republic, on the other hand, feels like an island of safety with some nice bars and cafes. So why are these two countries that share an island so different? Well, if you go back to the 16 and 1700s, Haiti was a French colony and Dominican Republic a Spanish. Haiti was the first country in the Caribbean to throw off the colonial yoke, throwing out the French and declaring their sovereign independence on the 1st of January, 1804. 1st of January, sharing a birth date with Australia. Well done, Haiti. 20 years later, the Dominicans threw out the Spanish and Haiti invaded and colonized them. So for about 20 years, Dominican Republic was the colony of Haiti. It took them another 20 years to throw them out. So why is Haiti such a basket case? Could you blame colonialism? Could you blame slavery? Well, this is what my friends in West Africa said about white people allowing leaders to blame slavery. Let's just remember what they said. We've been blaming white people for the past 60 years and um, nothing has been fixed. So within this past few 60 years, the white people have actually left Africa and handed off virtually everything to we, like to our leaders. But for the past 60 years, we are still complaining and nothing has been fixed. So right now, the generation of thought of most of us is that we are actually the architect of our own misfortunes as at this present time because we've had 60 years to fix ourselves and yet we have bad roads we have bad uh, education, system. education system we still have bad uh, nothing virtually works you know you we, we we tend to survive on our own oh, yeah. we, we tend to do things on our own we generate like, electricity on our own, own water, water on our, our own, own. We, we just try to live like we are surviving in the jungle yeah. So how do I still need to be blaming the white man who has who is long gone for the past sixty years? You see, have our so, own fuel and we still expressing. So it's it's it's, it's quite unfortunate. Yeah. That we are rather the reason why we are in the state so, we are right now because our leaders are actually really doing it in the wrong way. Yeah. They are taking the money and are, are, are just making them and their family members rich, rich and enjoying. They keep traveling from Africa to U.S., Canada, Dubai. But what we keep asking is, why can't they bring back what they see over there yeah. and, you know, develop the country? But no, they wouldn't. So why should I start blaming the white man? I have to blame my leaders. <laughs> now, if you listen to them and blaming slavery and colonialism for the dysfunctionality of West Africa actually gives a carte blanche to African leaders to ignore their own people but haiti has been independent much longer over a century longer than many of the west african countries as has dominican republic how come haiti is dysfunctional and dominican republic is not dominican republic now is the largest economy in the caribbean and excluding some of the rich tax havens that are still colonies of the europeans the richest country by head of population whereas haiti feels like a dysfunctional West African country. Now, if you can't blame slavery and colonialism, you have to blame just one thing left, and that is the Haitians themselves. Does it break down into tribes? No, because the former slaves, the descendants of slaves, aren't in tribal groups like in West Africa. There's a rich-poor divide. There's a corrupt-non-corrupt -corrupt divide. 
But that's not to say that the foreigners haven't had some negative impact in Haiti. Let's look at the UN, just two examples. After the 2010 earthquake, when a friend of mine tragically died in the UN building, the UN sent peacekeepers, but they sent peacekeepers from Nepal, which was a cholera endemic country, and Haiti had been cholera free. They put the Nepalese soldiers upstream from a drinking source and put untreated sewage into the water. And of course, that's what spreads cholera. So from being cholera free, it is now cholera endemic in Haiti. And there's been at least 14,000 cholera related deaths. And the UN still claims sovereign immunity from prosecution for over 14,000 deaths. Let's just say that was a screw up. Well, what about all the sex abuse? With interviews of only 2000 women, We've identified 265 children born of UN peacekeepers, let alone the civilian staff. So while Haiti can point to the UN and say, you've killed a lot of our people, you've raped a lot of our women, and that claim would be true. When you look at the total dysfunctionality of Haiti, it's 100% Haitian. And the current dysfunctionality is because the local gangs overthrew the president because the president flew to Kenya to ask the Kenyans to provide peacekeeping soldiers to re-establish peace. But the gangs didn't want law and order, so they overthrew the president. You can't blame anyone for that, but the Haitians themselves. It's a sad story. In the voice referendum in Australia, one of the arguments that I ran is you've got to test the structure first. Governance is important. Just because you have your own ethnic group ruling yourself doesn't mean governance is going to be any better or the life of the poor is going to get any better. Democratic Republic of Congo is a good example of that. A better example is here, Hispanola. Because Dominican Republic works, Haiti doesn't work, and there's no reason for it other than their own leaders and their own people doing their own thing. And the more we allow their leaders to blame colonialism and slavery, the more we are betraying those people, just like my guides on the slave coast said. On that note, Dominican Republic, which is so damn functional, is my pick of the Caribbean countries. I really like it here. So this is where I'm gonna end my sojourn through the Caribbean from my favorite one, Dominican Republic.